is The Upper Room at Dawn on Liberty Radio. Get ready, the program is about to begin. This is the 10th day of the Fast of Daniel. It is not for them to feel good about it, to sing songs, to speak in tongues, even though a person baptized with the Holy Spirit will speak in tongues, or even to boast about the fact one may have the Holy Spirit. The reason God pours His Spirit upon someone is so that the person may be saved and so that they can save others as it is written in Isaiah 61. If this is not your desire, the baptism with the Holy Spirit will not happen. Let's understand something. The Holy Spirit is what God has of most precious to give to anyone. You may have received a healing, a restoration in your family, and praise God for that. But the Holy Spirit is infinitely more valuable than any of this. But we need to ask ourselves, why does a person receive his Spirit? Well. This verse here says, the Spirit of God is upon me so that I can set the captives free, uh, set free the broken heart, those who mourn. So the Bible here is telling us that the, the reason why God will give His Spirit to a person is because that person has a desire to take God, the gospel, the word of God to other people. And we understand, I have Pastor Daniel here with me, we understand that the passion for the souls comes when the person receives the baptism with the Holy Spirit. But at the same time, uh, Pastor Daniel, you know, a person may not yet have that desire, that thirst, but if if God sees that the person wants to be used by God, oh my God, I, I'm not yet baptized with the Holy Spirit, but I'm so glad that I'm in your house. You restored me. I abandoned sin. You restored my life. I want to do the same to help others to find the same, but I cannot do this unless your Spirit lives in me. So when the Holy Spirit, when God sees that the person has this desire to take what they have received to others, to be an instrument, when that is the reason, the one reason for a person to receive the Holy Spirit, that's why they want the Holy Spirit, then God baptizes the person. The reason cannot be because I go to my friends, hey, I received the baptism with the Holy Spirit before you. Now I'm going to be an assistant. Now I'm going to be this. That cannot be the reason. Or the reason cannot be because the pastor says when a person receives the baptism with the Holy Spirit, they are so joyful, so ecstatic, so happy. I want that. Because either one of these two reasons is a selfish reason. The only selfless reason is when the person says, Lord, the passion may not be there yet because you give me this passion, but I want, I desire to to know you so I can take you to others, like we've read here. And it's, this is just a, a, a big hint for those who want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, because even myself, when I wanted to, to see, let's say, to, to have my wife to conquer her, right, that, that she may like me, that I liked her, I wanted to find out the things that she liked. I wanted to find out what was it that interests her, because this way, you know, I could call her attention. In the same way, if this person knows that what the Holy Spirit wants ultimately with them receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit is that they may be a soul winner and that their salvation may be guaranteed as well. So this person that has not yet experienced the baptism with the Holy Spirit, they ought to be already showing these signs to God by evangelizing, by saving souls, by investing in their spiritual life like we're doing during these 21 days. Because this for sure, Bishop, will call the attention of God when the Holy Spirit sees, wow, my servant, even before I, I give them my spirit, they are already involved in soul winning. They are already eager to help others 
just as I know that when I come upon them, they're going to be even more so an instrument. And, and God knows, you need to understand that God knows the difference between those who want to truly lay their lives down in serving God, truly set the captives free, and those who want a title in the church. God knows the difference. I, I, we pastors, we may look at a person and we cannot see the difference sometimes. Many times we can. Sometimes we can. But God knows, Pastor Joseph, when, when the intention of the person is to serve God, to be available, to spend their life. For example, I remember when I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, the last thing on my mind, because I wanted to do the work of God on the altar, the last thing on my mind was school. Yeah. The last thing on my mind were my hobbies. I remember I used to do uh, canoeing and I used to go to competitions in the weekends, canoeing, and, and I have other activities. I quit all that. No one asked me to quit that. I, I, I lost any interest in school because I wanted the altar. I wanted, you know, to, we, we've been on the altar now for, for years. I'm, I'm, I'm now 42. I turned 42 recently. So the, the, the youngest part of my life was spent on the altar. I don't feel like I missed out on anything. I haven't missed out. I, if people say, no, but don't you think you've missed out on, on certain experiences, certain things? I haven't because the moment a person receives the Holy Spirit, their desire is turned to the suffering, to like we went to do the night angels on Friday night, right? Yes. Actually, Pastor Daniel went yes. as well. All the three of us went. And you see people there suffering. Our desires for those people, are for the people who come to the church, you know, like you were, Pastor Joseph. Yeah. You were, forgive me, but you, you were like the gathering in the Bible. Indeed, Bishop. I came, Karen. I had a flannel to clean my mouth. I was destroyed. I used to be in the hospital sometime in a corner of the hospital, trembling because of taking injection. But what, mental hospital? Men no mental hospital because I was about to go to mental hospital. No more hospital because that you give injection. He, he, you know, if for you who don't know Pastor Joseph's testimony, if you've read about the gathering, the men who lived among the tombs, that had to be restrained with chains, and he would even break the chains. This, is, this was you. The, 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 in the, when I arrived in the hospital, people knew me. The old, all, the, all the men used to come to hold me because I would break anything. And, and, and when you received the Holy Spirit, surely your desire, you thought, my God, I want to help people like I was. Bishop, I usually say this. There was a situation in Ireland where people came to beat us up because of the, the gospel. That day, if was, I was just thinking, if it was that time, I would go crazy, Bishop. I just controlled myself in a way that I remember after that I was hurt. But I said, my God, how did I change? Because after I came to the church, I never had the experience of someone trying to beat me up. I noticed that, indeed, the Holy Spirit does a work inside of us that no tablet, no, no diazepam can do. Nothing that can do. I mean, old times I haven't taken could control me, Bishop. I would not sleep during the night. I also take 12 tablets. 12 tablets. You know, so the Holy Spirit knows. He knows. He looks at a person who's seeking the Holy Spirit and he sees that one. If I give him my spirit, he's going to cause destruction in the kingdom of the devil. He just needs my spirit because he already wants to serve me. Maybe because you don't have yet the Holy Spirit, he sees that you are shy. He sees that you have some shortcomings. But he knows the moment you receive his spirit, you become ready to make a difference in the kingdom of God. So why sometimes many people are seeking the Holy Spirit for months, different fasts of Daniel, and they don't receive him. Because they want a position, a title, to feel something, to tell others, to, they want to know what it's like. That's the wrong reason. That's why the Bible here says, the Spirit of the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, 
is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Hallelujah. This is what the Holy Spirit does. And the final part of this verse, we said there's two parts here, is the following. It says uh, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. When you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you are planted by God. You are a tree planted by God. And no one can uproot you. No one can cut you down. No one can take you out of God's presence. No one. If a person was once among us and they left us, it's because they were never planted by God. Huh, Pastor Danny? This is very powerful. A person who was once even serving with us, but today the person is in the world, they were never planted by God. Because when we are full of the Spirit of God, we are planted by Him. It says there, trees of righteousness, the planting of God. God would not be planting something that would be uprooted later. So those who receive the Holy Spirit, they remain forever. Yeah, those who receive the Holy Spirit because they have been planted by God Himself. So they have the, the, same, the same heart as God. They, they, they continue throughout their lives wanting to save souls they remain saving souls and at the same time tribulations difficulties will come but because they were planted by god himself they will remain like that tree that has roots that go way deep into the the earth anything can uh, the winds can come against it anything can come towards it but it's going to remain there and that's what happens to those who are planted by god we are now going to watch a testimony of someone who was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Before we do so, we, in the moment of the prayer, we will minister the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon your life here from the altar. And if you, if you find yourself in the parameters that we read here, you say, Bishop, I am the person you were talking about. I desire the Holy Spirit so he can use me. I want to be used by him. Then, if your, sense, if your desire is genuine, you will receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit today. Today, here from the altar, we have even some pictures of um, some upper rooms. You can see there on your screen right now. And we have one from Croydon there, one from Leicester, and one from Oxford. And perhaps you are there now in your upper room. The Holy Spirit will visit you there. Maybe you, 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 you can't be here on the altar with us, but the place where you are now will be your upper room. As you watch this testimony, prepare everything, get yourself ready, drink a glass of water, wash your face if, you, if you're feeling a little bit sleepy, and get ready. After this, this testimony, we'll go straight to seek the Holy Spirit. My name is Herve Makanda, and I received the Holy Spirit. I said the worst one was my relationship with my dad. There was a time where one of his friends basically made up a lie about me and he actually believed it. And that was when I decided I wanted, I wanted to kill him. So my mum and dad split up when I was a baby. And then at the age of six, I moved over to the UK with my dad. And that's for me when things got worse I can say. So when I moved there I moved in obviously I was living with my dad and his girlfriend at the time and we never really got along because at that time she was abusing me physically, she was abusing me mentally and it built, I built a lot of anger towards her and I built more anger towards my dad because he took her side every single time when she did wrong. Because me and my dad's relationship wasn't that good I looked for a family outside of my house so I started carrying weapons and that was for protection because of the type of area that I was from. I started selling drugs for a source of income. I was affiliating gangs. Like I said, I was looking for a family and my gang was my family. 
But the worst thing of it all was the anger inside of me. Although I had the friends, I had the girls, money and everything, the anger inside of me towards my dad was the worst thing of all. I used to carry guns, knives and tasers and I even had a machete that was the same size as my leg and I carried all of this just because I, just because I felt safe when I had them with me. We used to get into fights because I needed money, so I would get drugs from the local drug dealer, such as weed, cocaine, and heroin. I would sleep around with girls, and I remember even getting a girl pregnant twice. And even though I had all of these things myself, I couldn't sleep at night. And there was like a presence on my chest at night where it was just, I couldn't move in the night. Something was there sitting on my chest, holding me down, and I would scream, but no one would hear me. Despite everything that has happened to me, um, my lowest point was when I was planning to kill my dad. So I remember telling my friends about the plan. We got a van, had a gun, and I was planning to kidnap him, shoot him in the head, and then shoot myself. I, because I had no reason to live in, so I thought he didn't also deserve to live. With all these problems I was going through, I was lonely. No one really loved me. My, my dad like, neglected me and everything. So I didn't see a future for myself. My future was either dead by the age of 25 or spending the rest of my life in prison by the age of 25. So how I heard about the Universal Church was through a friend. I was with a friend that attended the VYG and he was on the phone with the pastor and I misinterpreted the conversation that he was having. Therefore, I thought he was talking about me. So I put it in myself that the following Sunday, I was gonna go there and I was gonna kill him. And I came to the church with a machete in my leg and my he was my target, even though I didn't know how he looked like, but he was my target. The following Sunday, when I came, came to, like I said, came to kill him and everything. And then it was the message when he started to speak, he was speaking about his life, but it was like, he was speaking directly to me. I thought, how is it that he can be standing there as speaking, smiling about everything that he's faced and I'm sitting here going through what I'm going through. And I said, this place has to be a place that I can actually change. It, I left that day. From then on, I kept coming back because I knew this was somewhere that I can truly change. Eventually, I decided to start coming out to the church services, so Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So in July 2019 was when I truly decided I wanted to give my life to God. So it was July, and then August, I got baptized in water. And then the end of September, the 21 days fast of Daniel came. And then I said, this is my 21 days. I wanted this to be my 21 days because I wanted peace. And I needed that peace because I hear everybody speak about peace, but it was a peace that I never had. Besides all the regular things that we do in the 21 days, for me, what I had to let go of was that self-sufficiency. I was self-dependent and dependent on myself. Although I tell God, oh, I trust you. But if I didn't see God do what I wanted, what I wanted in the time that I wanted it, I'll go there and do it myself. But the biggest thing that I had to let go of was my pride, my rudeness, and my arrogance. That nature I had to let go of. So it was the 16th day of the fast. It was a Wednesday service. I came to church. My day didn't go the best, but I was determined. I wanted, to, I wanted the Holy Spirit and I just, no matter what had happened, I let it all go. And I just sat there, listened to everything that was said. And when the time of the seeking came, I was just seeking God. I had nothing else to pour out and I was just praising God. And in that very moment, it was like, I'm with you. And that was, that was just it, I'm with you. And that's the assurance that I received. So from that moment onwards, I had that peace that I was longing for. I had that assurance that God is living inside of me. And I just wanted to tell the world. I wanted to tell everyone about what just happened to me. And I just wanted to save souls. I had the hunger for souls. And I just wanted to tell the world. I literally wanted to tell the world. So today I have peace. The peace that I was longing for, I have that peace inside of me. I don't have to carry weapons to feel safe anymore. I have the career that I want and the career that I wanted to be in. I'm working. I don't have to sell drugs to fund myself anymore. I'm sleeping around. Never again. I'm happily married. I've got a wife that, a beautiful wife that I love. And we've been married almost three years now. And today as well, I sleep like a baby. I sleep actually better than a baby. And the relationship with me and my dad, is growing. It's getting much better. And my dad's like my best friend now. Today I help out in the VYG as a coordinator. I'm an assistant in the church. And I want to keep helping people. I want to keep developing and helping people in many ways, that I, as much as I can. My desire is to serve God. And that is it. listening to The Upper Room at Dawn on Liberty Radio. This is the moment of prayer. Be in spirit 
as we turn to God. Receive the Holy Spirit here from the altar. Receive the Holy Spirit. Today is the 10th day of the fast of Daniel. And you who have been consecrating your every moment, your every thought to understand what God's will is for you. What He wants to do with you. You finally receive Him. You finally see Him as a Father. He takes your soul as His property. You now have an owner. You now have a Savior. Hallelujah. You are filled right now with the joy that you want to take to everyone that you speak to. The shyness is replaced by a boldness. Even you will be surprised yourself how you will be able to speak to people. How the Holy Spirit will place the right words in your mouth. You become a servant of the living God. And now, the only thing that you know how to say are words of thankfulness. Go ahead and thank Him. Thank Him for having chosen you, even though you may not deserve. Even though you may feel small, you may feel insignificant. Even though you may feel unworthy, perhaps in your eyes, so many other people in the church and even outside would be better candidates of the Holy Spirit in your mind. That's how you see yourself. But God saw in you this desire to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. He saw in you this desire to be a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Hallelujah. Receive right now the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Become born of God. Become a tool, an instrument in His hands. He confirms in you that you are no longer alone, that you are no longer orphan. He confirms in you that you are part of His plan, His master plan of salvation in this world. He confirms within you that He, he has a plan for your future, that He wants to use you as a beacon, as a lighthouse, just like a lighthouse points the way to the sailors, to, to the shore, to the, to the safe ground. He shows you also the way you become that lighthouse. And the light that emanates from you is the light of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Holy Spirit. We are not worthy of having this inner light that shines to the whole world. But we are thankful to know that you have chosen us. And here we pastors from the altar, we stretch our hands and we minister right now the baptism with the Holy Spirit upon all those who want to be instruments in God's hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. You are raising among us Abraham's examples of faith to others, to their family members, to their schoolmates, to their workmates, to their neighbors. Hallelujah. We thank you, my Lord. And we give our life to you in your hands. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I wish we had more time.
Every time I come to do this program, I see how 30 minutes flies by. I want to ask you today, you will read the part of the spiritual cleansing that talks about our own will. After the program, take a few minutes, two, three minutes to read that, to ask God to speak to you. And if your desire truly is to save souls, to heal the brokenhearted, then you have an excellent opportunity to do that on Sunday, on Saturday now rather, the national, the UK national day of evangelism. Are the people there in Kilburn excited, Pastor Dan? They are, Bishop. They are excited. What a great way to be now during these 21 days to have the national day of evangelism. For sure, all the servants of God, they're going to be there, Bishop. The people in Finsbury Park. Of course, Bishop. On we, fire. It's going, Saturday now, it's going to be a joy, an explosion of joy because we'll be able to take the gospel to those who are suffering through the wonderful medium of the city news that we have prepared, which will be arriving here in the church, I think Thursday or Friday. And tomorrow, in all our services, we'll be washing the hands of the tithers in the water that we brought from the ford of Jabbok, from the river there in Jabbok. My dear friends, may God bless you abundantly. We'll see you today in the church or tomorrow in the program. Bye-bye. How can you deny the character transformation of those who have received the mind of Christ? The natural gives way to the spiritual. The selfish gives way to the generous soul. The insecure to a strong and confident person. The excluded gives way to the chosen. Replace the thoughts of this world with the thoughts of God, and you'll see a great difference. The Fast of Daniel, 21 days to have the mind of Christ. From 1st to 21st of August, at any universal church near you,